Hey guys, it's Courtney. I am here with another Coloring with Courtney video for Trinity Stamps. And today we are gonna talk about skin tones and hair. So I've stamped out this little girl from the Seasonal Sweetheart stamp set. And I'm gonna be showing you how to color with one color combination for both the hair and the skin. And then I'll show you some of the other combinations that I typically go to. Um, for different skin tones and different hair, but the same shading and everything will apply. So I typically start with my skin tones and then do my hair and then I'll usually whatever clothing or outfit or background that I need to do from there. So for this particular little girl here, I'm going to go with the darker skin skin tone and these are the colors that I'm going to be using. This will be my highlight. This will be my shadow. So these two are going to be the ones that are used the least amount. And these two mid-tones will be the true color of her skin. So like always, I'm going to start off with my lightest color to map out those darkest areas, which I'm just going to go with a center light source. And I did that with all of them that I'll show you in a little bit. So the highlight, or I'm sorry, the shadow will be underneath where her hair is hanging over her face and then a little bit on either side. So I'm just plopping down some color here and this will kind of get the paper saturated so that my colors will blend nicely. My darkest color is the E59, which is super, super dark. So I'm gonna be using that pretty sparingly and that's just gonna be my shadow. So I'm gonna go right underneath her hair and then just kind of little tiny flick in the inside of her little ears there. Next, I'll go in with my darkest mid-tone and I'm gonna use this a little bit a little bit more than I did with the E59. So I'm gonna go right over that E59. You can see the colors are pretty similar. This just is a little bit warmer, I guess. It's got a little bit of a, not really red, but it's, uh, I guess it would be more reddish brown. Next is the E15. I'm gonna just extend that out even further. And I'm kind of going in with a, like a upside down V shape in the beginning and then I'll kind of blend that out a little bit going down towards the her chin area. And then finally, I'm gonna go back in with that E13, which will be my highlight color and then just blend the rest of that out. Now, if you're having a hard time blending, you can always use the tip to tip, but usually if you have your paper saturated beforehand, you shouldn't really have too much of a problem getting the colors to blend. So for her hair, I want her hair to be black. So typically with black, if it's a larger image like this, I'm going to have like an undertone. If it's a smaller image and or, you know, there's not much to color, I'll go right in with my black marker. But being there, this is a larger area, my undertone, I'm going to choose blue. A lot of people use like a deep purple, which is fine too. And you're not really going to see the blue too much. But I always start with this. And usually with my hair, I will start with my darkest color because I like to have those flick lines. It gives some texture to the hair and will kind of leave a larger highlight, which hair would naturally have. But for this case, I'm using the blue first, but normally I'd go right in with my black. So my darkest area is gonna be where her hair is parted, which you can clearly see where her hair is parted. So I'm just gonna create some flick lines. I'm not gonna fill in the whole thing with the blue. It's gonna be mainly where the darkest areas will be, but I'm gonna go pretty far. I'm gonna go further than I would with my darkest color. And I'm gonna have my highlight be a little bit on either side of her hair. So I'm gonna come up from her ear on both sides. And this doesn't have to be perfect for the blue. You're gonna to wanna to concentrate more the highlighting and all of that being with the grays and the black marker but this is just to kind of give it a give it an undertone, I guess you could call it. So I'm gonna go in now and act like my blue was not even there. So I'm gonna start off with my darkest color, which is the black marker. And I'm just 
barely touching the paper with the tip of my marker. And you can kind of get that effect by holding the marker straight up and down or as close to straight up and down as you can. And I'm varying the sizes of my flicks. I don't even know if you guys can see that, but the flicks are different sizes, but I'm also going with the shape of her hair. So coming up from her ear off to the left-hand side, they're gonna be more straight up and down. And then as I get towards that little curve of her hair, my flicks are also going to curve. So if you don't go with the shape of whatever object you're coloring, it's gonna kind of look a little bit weird if you are maintaining those flick lines, which for hair, I like to do. So you won't see me blend as much as I did with the skin, how I kind of went over the same area multiple times. You won't see me do that with hair as much because I wanna maintain that texture. So I'm gonna go in with the C7 and I'm just gonna extend those flicks out even further. Again, going with the shape of the hair. Now you can flick away from you, you can flick towards you, whatever you feel comfortable with. I usually flick away from me, except if I'm flicking at a curve, I usually flick towards me. I don't know, it's just easier for me to do it that way, but you do what's easiest for you. So extending these little areas underneath her ear and kind of where her hair is behind her would also be darker. And I'm gonna leave the highlight for the bottom part being on the very, very bottom of her hair. Going next in with the C5 and just doing that same exact thing, extending those flicks out. You can see I'm just leaving a little bit of white space at this point, and that'll be for my highlight color. Now you can also leave that white space and just give her a larger highlight there. It will make her hair look really shiny, but in this case, I will go down to the C3 and leave that as her the highlight color of her hair. So extending these flicks almost to the bottom of her hair, just leaving a little bit of a highlight for that C3. And you'll see here that I'm gonna quickly go over that area. I'm not over blending. If you over blend, my marker's a little bit dry. You can see it's really dry. Um, <laughs> you're going to lose those that texture of her hair. Now, I have a little bit too much blue showing. Her hair actually looks more blue than it does black. So I'm just gonna, ex I'm gonna add a little bit more of my darker color. I'm not gonna go in with the black, I'm gonna go in with the C7. So this is my darkest mid-tone. And I'm just extending those areas out a little bit further, up and down. Again, going with the shape of her hair. It's not too bad on the bottom portion, but I will extend it out a little bit further than I did before. And then I'm gonna go in with the C5, but I'm gonna skip the C3 this time. I'm not gonna, I'm not going to blend those areas out because I wanna make sure that I leave just a little bit of that highlight color or that highlight area. And each time I am just using the tip of my marker and I like that much, much better. Down here is a little bit too white, so I will go in with my lightest color there. All right, so we'll move on to her clothes and I'll just kind of keep this nice and simple because we're not really focusing on that portion of it. Um, you'll probably hear my Copic markers kind of rattling around because I don't have my colors picked out. I just recently moved. So my I moved from a house to an apartment. So it's been a little bit of an adjustment as far as getting used to a new craft room and kind of getting used to not having everything exactly where I'm used to having everything. I can't necessarily customize it as much as I'm used to, I guess. So I'm picking some bright colors, being her skin and her hair pretty dark. I'm just gonna kind of brighten up the card a little bit by using some brighter colors. And I'm starting off with my lightest color to try to just, again, get my paper saturated and kind of map out those darkest areas. Gonna go right in with the darkest color. 
and I'm placing my shading on either side of her coat here because we are using just a center light source. Also where her scarf is hanging over her jacket and where her little arms are over her jacket and also where her coat is buttoned in the middle. One side of that would be a little bit darker. For her boots, I'm just putting a little bit of shading on either side, paying attention to the shape of the boot. So like with the toe area, that would be a little bit lighter. And her one foot is kind of turned there a little bit. Going in with the darkest mid-tone and just adding the same areas as far as the shading goes, the same area, just extending it out a little bit further. Now I will use flicking in some areas and other times I'm just kind of using a straight line. I'm not really too focused on my shading for this particular part of the image. We're mainly just talking about um, the skin tones and the hair. And I usually try to pick some colors that would kind of go with the skin tones and the hair. So for example, this one is super dark. So I'm picking some brighter colors to kind of brighten everything up. You can kind of use, you can kind of stick to the rule of complementary colors. So if you have red hair, you can, and it's kind of like an orangey color, you can kind of stick to um, like blues or purples to kind of go along with that. Now for her, her scarf and her little mittens here, I think I will bring out, I'm just gonna use a, let's see. Do these some yellows here. Again, just sat saturating that paper. This is not even my lightest color, whoops. <laughs> with my lightest color. Going in with my darkest color, which is actually a orange marker, and I'm just going to put some shading on either side of her scarf and where that one the center piece kind of hangs over, just using the lines within the illustration to kind of guide me as far as where as the shading and the texture should go, just kind of extending those flicks that are already part of the image there. Blending this out with the darkest mid-tone, then the lightest mid-tone, which I'm gonna to have to kind of fill in a lot of off to the right-hand side, being I grabbed the wrong marker. And just leaving a very small highlight for this Y04, which is a pretty bright yellow. So it'll kind of go with those YG markers that we used. I'm gonna just use this black marker to fill in the little buttons on her jacket. And you'll wanna make sure that you're careful with that. You kind of just want to dab on the color because um, you're using alcohol markers. So they have a tendency to continue to blend even though you're not going back over that same area. So sometimes you'll see that color kind of spread a little bit. For her little leggings, I'm going to use some W markers and uh, my shading is going to be underneath her jacket and on like the inside of her little legs. Also doing one little flick or two little flicks. Um, where her kneecaps are. And for the W markers and the C markers, I typically will start off with my darkest color as long as I'm pretty confident as far as where my shadow should be, just because I find that the grays really blend well together. So I don't need to get the paper as saturated as I normally do. Just gonna leave a little bit of highlight on the outside portion of her legs. And then finally, I'm gonna add a little bit of a shadow underneath her. So I'm going to use some cool gray markers. And usually for my shadow, I kind of go around her as far back as the shadow will be with the darkest color and kind of flick out my color on either side. My shadows are kind of blobby, which is fine because shadows are kind of blobby. <laughs> but I go in with my darkest color. And then I'm going to go in with the C3, which I may have some problems with because it's kind of dry. But I don't normally blend it up, but I will blend it off to the side and down. And I'm going right over where I put that C3 or C5 rather and kind of making it. Well, I'm sure you guys know once you go over a dark color with a lighter color, it kind of makes it a little bit not necessarily muddy, but kind of blurry looking. And I'm OK with that for shadows. 
going in with the C1, doing that same thing, extending it off to the sides and down towards the bottom. And you can make this as long or as short as you want it to be. And that is it for that skin tone and hair combination. And now for the ones that I've already colored, this little girl has, and these is kind of my go-to skin combination. So my E04 is my darkest color. And again, just put that shading around the same area that I did for the first one. And her hair is more of a dirty blonde. You can see that my darkest color is the E18, which is a super dark color. But I used it so sparingly and just with the tip of my marker that it really does just look like shadows within her hair. And you can see the Y23 is a pretty light yellow. It's kind of more of a dull yellow. But with this whole combination, it does give her that golden, dirty blonde look. And for her clothes, I kind of just stuck with a purple, or I'm sorry, a blue, obviously not purple, blue and some BG markers to kind of go along with her hair. It works with complementary colors. And again, just added the shadow, kept that pretty simple. For the next combination, her hair is, a, or her skin is a little bit darker. Used a lot of the same colors. You'll see this is the one before it. You can see that I used the E01, the E11, and then I just kind of darkened it up. This is more of a pinky look, and this is more of a brown look. And for her hair, we made her a brunette, and I used the E50s. And you can see, even though that E59 is a super dark color, her hair didn't end up being all that dark. You can make it, you can use the same color combination and make her hair as dark as you want it to be just by the amount of E59 that you put down. And in this case, I didn't put a whole lot down. I just used it for my shadow. So her hair didn't end up being all that dark. Use some pinks and purples for her outfit. And again, added that little shadow. For the fourth and final one, I made her a little redhead and her skin tone is very light. And you can see that there's not a whole lot of contrast. Whenever you're coloring anything light, whether it be skin or any other object, an animal, anything at all, the lighter it is, like the more pastel it is, the less contrast you're going to get. But you can see my darkest color is significantly darker than my lightest color. But when you put all of them together, you're just not going to get the contrast that you would for anything darker. For her hair, my I use a variety here. I use the E marker for my darkest color, some YR markers, and then a Y marker for my highlight to kind of brighten that up. Again, you can make this as dark or as light as you want to, depending on how much of each color that you put down. Colored her little outfit with some purples, added that shadow, and that is it. So I'm going to take some photos. I'm going to finish up the cards and just add a sentiment, keeping them really, really nice and simple. But I will include the pictures of the cards as well as the color combinations over on the Trinity Stamps blog. Just for your reference, if you're still new to Copics, you kind of know what colors you may want to purchase. Or if maybe you already have these colors and have never tried these combinations before. So thank you guys so much for stopping by. Have a great day.